With Germany's electric fleet in ruins after the Second World War, it would require new locomotives that would be able to keep up with the demands of rebuilding post-war West Germany. The Deutsche Bahn would introduce a new standard electric locomotive fleet that would revolutionize the German railways forever, creating icons and memories for those who experienced it. My name is Jamie and I'm here to tell you all about the DB electric standard locomotive fleet. If you enjoy these sorts of videos, do subscribe and like this video, as it does help out a lot. Next week's video will be about an iconic passenger train, named the Canadian. However, we do also discuss Canadian Pacific's other flagship known as the Dominion. So tune into that to learn about Canada's most famous transcontinental trains. With the formation of Deutsche Bundesbahn of West Germany on 7 September 1949, it would take over the infrastructure, locomotives and rolling stock of the Deutsche Reichsbahn that was located in West Germany. It was focused on repairing damaged infrastructure and, fo and fixing older locomotives at first. However, it was important to DB to look forward. It would eventually develop two new types of standard electric locomotive. A 12 axle freight locomotive that would be able to replace the previous E94, nicknamed the German Crocodile and a new 8-axle general-purpose electric locomotive that would be able to replace the older E44 class. Taking features from previous locomotives such as the E19, it was now adding the feature of seats for the driver as previously normal for them to stand. This new standard class would originally be called the E46. It would later be changed to the E10 designation once the top speed had increased to 130 kilometers per hour. The E10 would use 15 kilovolts 16.7 hertz AC, the standard for Germany. Weighing at 85 tons and would feature an electric brake with a standard train air brake with a maximum speed of 130 kilometers. The five prototypes would be created be numbered E10001 to E10005. These prototype locomotives would be different from each other except 005, which was identical to 004. 001 would be made by Cross Maffei with electrical equipment by AEG. He would have a hollow shaft drive by Alstom. 002 would be made by Krupp with Brown Bovary equipment with a disc drive. 003 would be made by Henschel with electrical equipment by Siemens with a rubber spring disc drive. 004 and 005 would be produced by Henschel with AEG equipment with a Ciron Louvre drive which is similar to a hollow shaft drive. These would be relatively similar with differences with windows and headlights placement. They would be initially placed at Munich Central Station Depot and after 1955 at Nuremberg Central Station Depot. These prototypes would be retired between 1975 and 1979. Locomotives 002 and 005 have been preserved. The five prototypes which show a universal locomotive would not be able to meet all the requirements. This will create a new line of locomotives instead. The E10, the long distance passenger locomotive, the medium freight E40, the branch line and local traffic E41, and the heavy 12-axle E50. A future express passenger engine would be planned alongside these. However, it would only come into fruition later with the development of the iconic E03 locomotive. To simplify this video and to reduce confusion, I will only be referring to the locomotives by their original naming scheme, instead of their later classification scheme that occurred in 1968. However, I will still occasionally list the other naming scheme. The E10 itself would be produced by all different manufacturers and equipment manufacturers. However, these machines would be designated the E10.1 series to denote the production variant. A total of 379 E10s would be produced overall, and from the 288th model, a new locomotive body would be produced. This would be a new and more aerodynamic body and could be noted from a sharp bend in the front. 
This new body style would be named the E10.3 subseries. The E10 itself would have some very interesting subseries. Two of the most notable subseries are the E10.12s or the BR112s, and the later experimental locomotives for the 03 series. First, let's go through the E10.12s. These were six specifically built locomotives for the Rheingold train in 1962. These would use a newer style front from the E10.3s to improve aerodynamics, but they would feature special Henschel bogies that would allow them to travel at 160 km per hour, 20 km faster than the standard E10s. These special locomotives would also feature a special livery to match the Rheingold carriages featuring a cream body with a cobalt blue band. In 1968, 20 further examples of the E1012s would be delivered. However, these would no longer use the special Henschel bogies, but a modified version of the standard bogey, as it was a cheaper alternative despite being less durable overall. As part of the high-speed passenger locomotive development, Two e would be used as test beds to allow testing of the future EO3 components. E10s were numbered 299 and 300, and they would reach a maximum of 200 km per hour during test runs between Forsheim and Bamberg in 1963. As the E10s would be in operation for more than 50 years, they would be due for a well-deserved retirement. As reunification of Germany occurred, Newer and more capable locomotives from both East and West Germany would threaten the E10 into an earlier retirement. The East German designed and built BR143s would be capable of push-pull trains, unlike the earlier West German E10s. To draw as much life out of the E10s, push-pull equipment from retired E41s would be fitted into E10.3s. By 2001, the original E10 series would be retired, and newer EMUs such as the BR45 and Bombardier Trax locomotives would start to replace them. In 2011, the last of the first series would be retired and scrapped. The last E10 under DB Regio, a DB subsidiary, would have its last run on February 12, 2014, with DB itself only having four on the register. Only 110169 would be operational, with the other three being in long-term storage. Two of these would end up being scrapped. 113309 would end up being on the hands of a tourist railroad, for the Rheingold tourist train. Currently many E10s either survive in operational use or in museums. The E40 was a dedicated freight locomotive based upon the E10. It will be the most numerous of the electric standard locomotives with 879 built. To make it more suitable for the role, it would remove the electric brake, geared lower for more acceleration, resulting in a top speed of only 100 km per hour. The E40 would also be used in all sorts of roles, including commuter trains. In 1969, the E40's top speed would be increased to 110 to allow for better usability on passenger trains. The E40 would be best remembered for replacing steam engines on freight trains. The E40 would be able to move 2,000 tons on a flat grade on 95 km per hour. It would be more powerful and faster than the steam engines would replace, such as the older BR50s and BR44s, which were limited to 80 km per hour. A subseries of the E40s would be later made, known as the E40 11s, or the BR 139s. What made these special was the inclusion of an electric brake. 31 of these E40s would be built, as steep grades would cause braking issues, so an electric brake would be fitted to these locomotives. The E40, like its other relatives, would slowly begin to be phased out by the mid 90s. By 2003, only 300 of the initial 879 would still be in service. With the economic crisis of 2008, a large majority of the E40s would be removed from service due to the lack of freight traffic. 
By 2014, only 49 would be in service with DB. In 2016, October, the E40 would make its last trip under DB, as more powerful and more modern locomotives would replace it. I do have to highlight in service with DB part, as other companies such as Locomotion or Potsdam Railway Company still use them quite frequently, with Potsdam Railway Company still using 14 of them for freight duties. The E41 would be the light branch line locomotive. Between 1956 and 1971, 451 E41s would be built, with the last 16 being given the new series designation of BR141. The lightweight axle loading of 15 tons would allow it to run on branch lines and be used mainly for local traffic. The E41s would have a top speed of 120 km per hour allowing them to be used on early express trains. However, with the speed increase for express trains to 140 km per hour, they would lose that role past the 1950s. What made the E41s especially useful was a push-pull control. They would be initially used in the Munich, the Ruhr, and the Saarland area. However, the E41 would be eventually be used all over Germany. Later in 1987, seven locomotives would be given to the Nuremberg S-Bahn. These were 141436 to 422. These would be given the new S-Bahn livery and be used on push-pull trains. These trains would be later replaced by BR143s and be repainted into in 1994 back into DB Red. By the end of the E41s, they would be replaced by the East German-built BR143s and later on the BR425 EMUs. By the mid 1980s, DB was already planning to retire the E41 in the medium term. Starting in 1987, some E41s would already be retired. However, the German reunification would put a hold on the retirement plans for the E41s and would find themselves on further push pull trains for DB Regio. By the mid-90s, the E41s would be painted in an oriental red, and in 1997, they would also be included into the traffic red paint scheme for DB Arg. By the end of the millennium, after the original 451, 335 E41s would still be in service. What would effectively retire the locomotive would be the new BR425 series of EMUs and private regional railway companies starting. The end of E41s was nigh. On 31st December 2005, only 5 E41s were in operation, and this was only due to a shortage of newer locomotive. As locomotive hold services for the main Wesser regional trains were converted to rail cars on December 10th, the last E41s would now be out of a job and be uncertain of their future. Three of these would be scrapped. However, 141401 would be safe to be in an exhibit from Bombardier alongside a BR44 steam locomotive. Currently many E41s have been saved, with 141228 being operational. Finally, we discuss the E15 locomotives, the heavy freight variant of the standard locomotive. The first noticeable difference from the rest are the trucks. The E50 is equipped with two three-axle trucks. The first E50 would be built starting in 1957. The normal output of the E50 is rated at 4,500 kilowatts, a thousand more kilowatts compared to the earlier four-axle models such as the E10 and E40. The motors on the E50 would be smaller, weaker and lighter in comparison to the E10. A single E 50 motor named EKB 760 would be producing 735 kilowatts in comparison to the E10's Siemens WBM 37222 of 925 kilowatts per motor. Unlike the general freight model E40, this would actually feature an electric brake. By 1969, the performance of the E50s would start to be lacking. The train started to become bigger and heavier. 
It was also noted that the E-50s would damage themselves as they attempted to push past 80 km per hour. This would often lead to traction motor damage. The E-50 would actually start to be retired in 1993, with AC-driven locomotives such as the BR-152 or the famous Euro Sprinter would start to arrive in mass. The last depot to have E-50s was Korn Westheim, where they would be used on pushing services for the guest slice Linger Steger, while also being used on heavy freight trains at the same time. By 2003, all E-50s would be retired from service. Currently, only two E-50s survive, one the original DB Green and the other in DB Traffic Red livery, representing the beginning and the end of its career. These locomotives represented the new hope for a new DB. These locomotives paved the way for future locomotives such as the BR-1803s and even iconic things like the BR-186. Before I say goodbye, I do want to notify you guys that I'll be doing a Q&A about trains in general. Things about how they work or just general questions about train, so I'll be happy to research these questions and answer these questions to the best of my ability and with the research I come from books and all that. So just drop these questions down in the comments below and I'll make a video answering these questions. I just want to say thank you for watching this video. Thank you to my partner for supporting me in this hobby. Thank you and have a good night.